Recap video for Workout Wednesday, WOW 2020, Week 35 walkthrough, where I will show you how to go about creating a bivariate map. Very simply, a bivariate map is simply being able to display two measures uh, overlaid at the same time uh, using some geographic dimension. So, this challenge also uh, looked at two brand new features in version 2020.3, which was released in August of 2020. Uh, we're going to take a look at two features in this. Uh, we're looking at how to create a relationship calculation, uh, meaning how can we relate two logical tables based on a calculation. And then the other one we're going to look, the other feature that we're going to look at is the default value of a parameter when a selection is cleared. So let's get to it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to set up our data source. We'll click into our data set just like that. And right now you can see this is a multi connection. Uh, table. I've built these off of extracts. You might have built them off of CSVs. Either way, uh, it's going to be the exact same. So the very first thing I do is I'm going to bring in my lookup table. And my lookup table, as you can see, is simply um, I'm going to show my hidden fields. So we have a state code and we have a county code. If we look at our uh, historical 2000 to 2019 county unemployment, what we'll see is we'll see a FIPS code. And uh, a FIPS code is very simply a concatenation of state code and county code. And then lastly, our other table, which is the 2018 median income by county, is this table right here. And we're going to relate each of those to our lookup table. And the, and the way that we do that, if we click into this relationship, you can just see really quickly that uh, I was able to edit calculation, uh, edit relationship calculation. And when I do that, I just, I get my, my normal calculated field dialog box and I just type in uh, whatever calculation uh, I need into that. I didn't need to do that on both sides, just on the state side where I needed to create, create that calculation. And then on the other side, I just joined it to the FIPS calculation, or to the FIPS field. So that's really simple. Nothing too uh, crazy about that. Um, and again, we did the same thing over here, where we did a concatenation of those two codes, matched up to the maps up to the FIP. Now, let's talk about why this is so important. You can see this table right here is just has one row per county on it. This is our median household income for 2018. And our unemployment rate is a historical, and this has a different level of granularity. This has a different level of detail with this table. This is one row per year per county. So if we were to try and join all of these together, what we would end up with is we would end up with this value duplicated for each year in our final table. We would have had to have relied on either setting a pre-aggregate in our uh, final in our calculations, or um, we would have had to use a fixed level of detail calculation to reduce or eliminate that duplication. But with relationships, we're all good to go. <clears throat> and I think that's one of the biggest uh, things that are going to come out of having this new relationship data model is the we're eliminating the need uh, for a lot of that duplication. All right, now that we've set up our uh, we've set up our logical data model here, we're ready to start building. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard, and like I said, a bivariate map is nothing more than just sh overlaying two measures on the same in the same dimension. So really quickly we can see that this color of blue show 
counties where there is a high unemployment rate and a low median household income. Now, let's go into this sheet and we'll talk about how we built that. So what we're doing right now, you can see we've got our three tables and we've got all of our things here. Uh, what I did real uh, quick is I created a uh, I created a hierarchy for state and county name. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to create, we need to figure out how we're going to compare one county to all of the other counties. And you can see these triangles in here, which means we're using table calculations. And the table calculation that we're going to be using uh, for all of this is going to be the window percentile calculation. So what we're doing is we're taking the window percentile, we're calculating the window percentile value of our measure, and we're going to return the value at the 25th percentile threshold. And we're doing the exact same thing at the 75th percentile value. So we're going, so this is what this calculation is doing is we're asking Tableau, hey, for all dimensions on this sheet, go and look at all of their median household incomes and return the value at the 75th percentile. Okay. Then what we once we have those two thresholds, then we need to create some case statements to evaluate each county compared to those values. And I did that with this calculation here. So for the median household income uh, bivariate, I said if the sum of that household income is less than or equal to the 25th percentile, then return low. Else, if it's less than the 75th percentile, then return medium, else high. I could have gone one step further and done an and right here to do and greater than or equal to this. But because of the way that I've built this up, the way that I've built this calculation, all of these values have already been accounted for. So those values will already have, so this is kind of a trick that Tableau uses whenever it's going in and um, going through if statements, it will do it in the order that you write them. So if you write all of your lows first, then when it gets to the medium logical statement, it doesn't, it's going to skip over all those rows that already have a value in them. So that's just kind of a couple trick, save some keystrokes, um, and you don't really need to make your calculation as, as, as complicated as you need to. And then again, I don't need to say here, else if greater than 75 than high, because the only thing that's left, because my low rows have been stamped and my medium rows have been stamped. The only thing that's left are all the highs. So that's how we're able to really kind of help some of the simplisticness of how to build out some calculations like this. And then I just duplicated this to get the uh, to do the unemployment on the other measure. Now, again, real quick before we move on, let's talk about why this is why relationships are so uh, are so important. Because we're using only one measure, and it's come, and that measure is coming from one table where there's a one-to-one -one relationship to our uh, to our lookup table, I only just need to take the sum. I don't need to do a min or a fixed at the county and state level. It's just I just sum it up, um, which is again I think a really really nice piece of functionality. Uh, that's going to be able to give yourself and your users and your stakeholders more trust in the results because there's no more duplication that you have to worry about. Okay, so I've created two calculations now. One for high, medium, low on the median 
uh, household income, and a high, medium, low calculation for the unemployment rate. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to combine those two together. And that's very simple. It's just a concatenation of those together. And that is the field that I'm going to be putting on my color shelf. And as you can see over here in the, le in the legend over here, I'm, I get a value for each domain. Okay, so that's how you build, that is the basis for how you're going to build out your bivariate mats. Now, let's talk about some of the tricks. Some of the tricks are, as you can see, I'm only showing the contiguous United States here, but I'm not filtering out Hawaii and Alaska. I am only hiding them. So how am I doing that? Well, there's two ways you can go about doing it. One, you can, because this is a map, you can just do a pan and zoom. You can just do a zoom only on the contiguous states. Um, and then you could create another sheet and uh, go that route. But what I chose to do is I chose to hide the states that I don't need. <clears throat> and the way that we do that, the way that you can create a dimension filter that will hide rather than filter is to use one of my favorite trick calculations which is the lookup the lookup zero calculation now what this does it is a table calculation <clears throat> and essentially what we're doing is we're looking up we're returning the lookup of each state looking back no rows, which means we're looking at each row and returning the state. What that does, it essentially creates an aggregate calculation, an aggregate table calculation that will allow you to, to do this. Now remember, and this is why we're able to, it looks like a dimension, it looks like a filter, but it's actually hiding. And the reason that we're able to do that is because we're manipulating the uh, order of operations for how Tableau calculates. And table calcs are at the very, very bottom. Table calcs ha happen one of the last things that happen. So right now, I'm hiding, I'm not showing Alaska and Hawaii and Puerto Rico, but the values that are being created are, of those states are being included in my calculations. So then what I did is I just, uh, so in my filter, I just edited my filter where I'm just excluding Hawaii and Alaska. Then I'm left with the contiguous states. Then I just duplicate this sheet and um, switch my hide dimension here to only show the states that I need. And that's how I'm able to get a sheet for each of these. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is how to create this color legend, the static color legend here. Well, that's very easy. Simply, I just created a nine row, nine row, two column worksheet in Excel um, and just copied that over there and just set it up this way. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's a trick I use all the time uh, because I like to use custom legends as opposed to the default legends. All right, next we need to talk about the parameter, the parameter action. So very simply, this is nothing more than a parameter action. You click on a um, very, very simple. We can go in and we can look at how I built this sheet. Go in there, just put year on there, create this to be a custom legend. And then I add a parameter action to allow me to allow the user to filter to that year that I click on. So if I click this, I have this parameter action. It's on sheet nine, which is my clear, and it's on year. Uh, it's on my year filter sheet. The parameter I'm going to be doing is my year parameter. My field is the year field, and I'm not doing any aggregation on that. And then new feature right here. Clearing the selection will set my value to 2019. What's happening? What does that mean? Well, 
Really simply, if I click on 2009, my sheet's going to click to 2009. My, my sheet filters to 2009, just like I want it to. Now, I could, this is just a single sheet, nothing else on it, um, except for a uh, unhighlight, some non-highlighted dimension filter actions there. Uh, but as you can see, it has nothing to do with uh, the parameter or year. So because this is a dimension, um, it's, that's how it's able to counteract with my, with my parameter action. And um, I'm essentially clearing that parameter action. And because I've told Tableau, hey, whenever I clear that parameter action, I want you to default to 2019. Just like that. So <clears throat> that's how you go about creating uh, this bivariate map dashboard with uh, relate by calculations and clear parameter action values. Each of these new features are re were released in version 2020.3. I encourage you all to follow along uh, for all of our other challenges at workout-wednesday.com. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Go forth and viz.